Hey guys, welcome to Traditional Bow Hunting Wilderness Podcast. This is Jason Samkovic. Today we are talk about every detail of my bow, my arrows, my setup, every single possible detail about this. Every time I put something on social media or in a YouTube video, everybody's always asking, how much weight do you shoot? What kind of arrows are those? What's your bow specs? Um, I don't think I've ever made a video where I put it all in there like that. It's spread out throughout my videos, but today we're going to have it all in one. We're down here at my place in Georgia. It's Christmas Eve and it is 73 degrees. Absolutely beautiful down here. Went hog hunting this morning. I got into hogs a couple times. I uh, didn't kill anything. Did kill a doe uh, down here. My first Georgia doe uh, last or three days ago. I stocked up on that doe. That was really cool. Um, but we're going to talk about this setup. So first of all, while it's unstrung, this is a classic. Okay, this is a Northern Mist classic bow, which means it's a straight limb bow. This is an ASL style or what they call a hill style bow. There is no as you look at that bow, there's no reflex or deflex. It is a straight limb bow all the way across, complete straight limbs to that. And uh, it is a straight grip, as you can see on there too. That grip style is a straight style grip, no locator, no nothing. And I like that style. This is not cut to center or past center. Uh, it is a hill style bow, so my arrows, I gotta make sure they do uh, flex around that riser. Um, the bow specs itself, uh, this is made by Steve Turay at Northern Mist. This is a Northern Mist classic model. And uh, this one here, 64 inches, it's 57 pounds at my 26 inch straw length. And I do change the grips out. Uh, instead of leather, I use a rubber grip, which you can see on here, a rubber bicycle tube. And then I put leather, my own leather on here. But that allows me to put a stick or something in here to, as an arrow holder, which I've shown you in other videos. So I like the rubber grip. Plus, it doesn't hold any deet or sweat or slime or gunk uh, like leather does. It just, a rubber grip is what I've been using for the last 20 years. I love it. Um, so that's the setup. Now I do use a stringer on my bows. Um, I know a lot of people give me crap for using a stringer with a long bow because I can. I can take this bow and I can put it on the inside like this and I can do it and I can fight with it. It's hard for me. I'm a short guy. I don't have all that height to be able to really roll my upper body and flex into that. It's, it's trickier for me. Um, so for me, I can do it and have before, especially when I'm pulling my bow up through sticks and stuff. And sometimes I'll actually, you know, if I get, if it's snagged and I'm yanking on it, I'll pop that string off that bottom knock and then I got to restring it that way. But I prefer a stringer. I make my own leather cup stringers. And, uh, but I mean, it's so simple. It's just easy. You set the stringer on there, stick your foot on it, I don't even put it on the ground, and I just string it, and I'm done. So for me, using a stringer, which like you said, you can see here what it is. I build my own. It's almost like a tillering stringer with paracord, uh, but simple, and it works very functional for me. So I do use the stringer on it all the time. You know, like I said, quick, simple, and easy. Um, the uh, string itself is Dacron. I shoot Dacron. This is 16 strands of B55 Dacron. And my silencers, I've shown you videos on this, but I make my own combination. Uh, I've got a couple birds in there still. Uh, but I make my own combinations of yarn and cat whisker. You can see both in there, the yarn and the cat whisker. Uh, and I do use a rubber tip protector, but I cut it off short where you can see that so that it does not go past there so there's no chance of water getting into it. Occasionally, I will lose one because it's not full length, but they stick on there pretty well and uh, it does let me set that bow down anywhere I want on the ground without worrying about it. Um, and so I, I do use that on there. Um, I use a Great Northern Quiver. I modify mine to turn it into a six arrow quiver. How I do that is I replace the foam that's in there with a white block foam. You can use a yoga block as well too. And the way this quiver is designed, it gives you this little bump out right here that you can see, which is perfect to hold a piggybacker. So you can see I have a piggybacker on here and this arrow, this is actually my extra arrow and it sits perfect. Again, I've done videos on this, but so I run six arrows on my five arrow Great Northern Quiver and you can see them in the hood. I'm hoping you can see this well because I don't have my regular cameras and laptops and things where I can see what you're seeing. So I'm hoping I have this framed right for you. But that you can see I have all six arrows fitting in that hood and then that piggybacker version right here just off to the side resting right in that little notch that is right there on that between where that bar and that comes in and it holds it right there perfect so I run six arrows on that great northern quiver I do always have a judo with me it is my back spot right here 
judo arrow and that's also what holds my tab on so when i'm ready to go all i have to do is to go as i just pop that judo out and i slide the tab off of it put the judo back in and my tab is there when i'm done i take my tab stick it on my judo like this and fish it on there and then i put it in my quiver like that that way it's always with my bow tabs always right there never goes anywhere i use a neat, a neat pinch free leather tab been using them for the last 15 18 years uh, i do take the little center section they give you between the fingers they got a piece of foam in there i take it out and i glue those shut uh, so it just works perfect for me and fits in my hand just fine and um, it's, it's always worked very well for me so that's what i use there and like I said, that judo is always right there, ready to go. Um, Broadhead wise, arrow wise, um, actually the bow woods, I should say too, because um, a lot of people are asking. It's the first bow. I did not actually request that this finish be on here, but I love it. Steve built me this bow, and I told him I wanted something contrasty and nice. So this is actually, uh, this is uh, uh, olive, I think this is olive ash veneers, olive ash veneers on here. And this is a Zircote Z with a Z, Zircote uh, wood riser, ash or uh, olive ash veneers front and back. And this bamboo cores is what this bow is made out of. And then I have power wedges in the tips, which you can see there, that is that red on there. And uh, fiberglass front and back, but that's what the bow is made out of. And uh, I love it. All my bows that he's built for me, I have three classics. They are all 64 inch, 57 pounds at 26 inches. I like that because then I'm shooting the same arrows out of all three bows. I brought two bows down here with me. If something were to happen to this one, I grab my other one and it doesn't skip a beat. I like having clones like that. Um, but this finish that's on here is a, a gloss finish that he put on here, uh, which I really love. From now on, every bow I have him make will be a gloss finish. Now, when I got it, it was super shiny. I took some uh, 4 ot steel wool, 4 steel wool, and just kind of buffed over it like that and took knocked down some of that sheen that was on there, that reflectiveness. I love it. I love it. The durability of this gloss finish never had any bow ever be anywhere near as tough as what this finish is. I straight up love this finish. Um, so I'll have every bow I have made it from now on done that way. Um, my arrows, they are uh, gold tip. These are uh, 500 spine gold tips. It's 27 inches from the back of the insert to the knock, to the throat of the knock. Okay, I shoot a 26, actually it's 27 and a quarter to be real. Um, but uh, I draw 26 inches. So what that does for me is gives me about an inch and a quarter or so to the back of the insert, uh, almost an inch and a half to the back of the broadhead when I draw this. Uh, so with the judo on here, when I put this on here, and I come into anchor, you can see where that lines up for me. And it comes in right there, just like I'm looking for. I think you can see that there. And that's how I have that set up. So that it's usually right about that. You know, it gives me, about, I'm about 26 inches is about where I draw at. So um, my arrows, they are set up with a... Uh, flat. This one's actually pretty, well, I'm going to use it, but I chop my own feathers. These are a four inch high back feather. This one's obviously missing a little bit, but it's a four inch high back feather that I put on there. And then somebody here at the door. Nope. Um, but uh, four inch high back feathers, I chop them myself. Um, so they're basically chopped as a uh, five and three quarter, and then I cut them down to a four inch is what I do. Um and they are helically fletched with a pretty extreme helical as you can see on there i like that heavy helical uh, cap wrap on there and a dip but now my inserts are a double insert so even though because a lot of you guys are like how are you getting that arrow to fly out of that bow with that 500 spine shaft my inserts are three inches long so that insert is about that far down into there so my flexible part of my shaft is from here back um, and that is a three inch two of these 100 grain inserts which one of them i take and i grind on my grinder the head off and then i nail them and tack them together again i've done videos on it if you watch my arrow video and so that insert is set in there about that far it acts as an internal footer and it gives me that 200 grains of insert plus a hundred grain steel adapter plus a um, 200 grain, or this one being 175, uh, head weight on there. So it gives me about 725 grains of arrow weight with 450 grains up front. My FOC on this arrow is insane. 
you know, where that balance point is. And uh, these are uh, A Boyer Wapiti heads that I'm shooting. That's what this is. It is a uh, one and a quarter inch wide single bevel, left bevel. And uh, I also like the A Boyer uh, big bonehead or bonehead large, which is a quarter inch wider, a one and a half inch wide. And then I still shoot a lot of the Magnus Classics, which are one and a half inch wide. These one and a quarters, I've been testing them. So far, uh, every animal I've killed so far this year has been with one of these, and it's worked perfect. Uh, I, except for the doe. That doe I killed this year, I used a prototype broadhead on from a... A buddy of mine has started up a broadhead company, which I'm excited about. I can't give you any details, um, but uh, it's a great setup. They fly, they fly perfect for me. Not only do I bear shaft them, I also uh, paper tune them and make sure so the setup works well for me. Quiver, that great northern quiver, like I said, I've been using great northern quivers forever, and uh, the system just works. It works flawless for me. I don't have anything I need to change on it, um, and if I were ever to change anything. I'd think about maybe making a guard that would go here that I could maybe very lightly strap on here with a piece of leather that would fold over to here and kind of wrap down this. Uh, and the reason for that is when I'm pig hunting and stuff like that and I'm walking through brush, things keep getting snagged in here. River cane, sticks, they keep getting wedged in here. I would love to have a little leather piece that would just kind of clamp, you know, I, that's something that maybe someday I'm going to do just so I can fish it through there easier because that seems to get crap stuck in there all the time. Um, and it'll do that with any quiver. But other than that, this setup, it works flawless for me. Um, I've been using basically this setup for, you know, with these classic style bows now for about six years. Um, and I'll never go back to an R&D bow or any other type of bow. Great setup for me. Works really good. That's the specs on the bows, the arrows. And uh, I don't use an arm guard too much. Brace height wise is the reason for that. Um, even in the winter now, unless it's really bulked up, if I've got, if, if we get temperatures into the 20s, I'm probably going to throw an arm guard on because I'll probably need it here. Um, not necessarily need it because I'm worried about hitting, but need it to keep that bulk of the clothes a little bit out of there. But um, I set my brace height at 7 inches exactly on this. And using a heavier string, when I use a skinny string, I got to go to 7 and a quarter. Um, with those skinny strings, I don't know why, but they hit my arm more. With a thicker string, a 16 strand here, or a uh, 18 strand fast flight, I'm fine at 7. Um, can even get down to 6. Once I get to 6 and 3 quarter, then I start hitting my arm. So I set it at 7. Uh, that way I'm good and safe for hunting season. But with these strings, if I'm shooting a skinny string, i got to really jump that up higher. For some reason, they hit my arm more. Um, but with a this Dacron set at 7 inches of brace height, that does not hit my arm. Even I can wear three shirts. Three, I can wear a thermal shirt. Um, another thermal shirt and then a heavy outer shirt and I'm still not hitting my arm or worried about anything or a jacket or whatever I want. So that's the reason I run my bows at seven. Uh, a lot of people prefer to be six and a half and yeah, I find I wear an arm guard more. So for me, that's how I run it. My grip, I grip that bow like it's meant to be. Okay, I do not shoot this way. I do not shoot like that. I do not leave, loop, any of that stuff. I grip that bow and I hold on and I'm putting pressure right down the center of my my hand when I shoot that. That's that's my way I shoot. I shoot three fingers split. Okay, so I am split. One above, two below. Anchor in the middle finger in the corner of my mouth right there like that. Um, I try hard to think about getting that elbow in line. I don't ever pay attention to back tension. I've never thought about back tension in my entire life other than a few times I think about it practicing. Doesn't matter to me. Most important thing to me is fighting my release. I have a very bad release where I do not release completely. I almost kind of release like this. It's more of a right there and it lets the string boom off my hand rather than a nice clean release like that. And that's because I torque in a lot. I got to constantly remind myself because I can't my bow. I got to remember to turn that wrist, uh, which looks kind of when I'm drawing that um, on there. I shoot with a cant of about 45 degrees. So or 30, I shoot about like this, right? Right here is about where I shoot cant wise. And in order to do that, I gotta make sure that my hand is not like this, that my hand is following my face in that bow. So I gotta constantly remind myself to turn that hand in when I'm drawing it, get that hand in and turned in. That's one of the battles I fight. But I do keep that bow canted. I, I like that cant 
right there, that angle, gets it right out of the way for me, nice and clear. So um, that's about it. It's everything I got on the bow, the arrow, the setup, all the details. Um, the knocks on the arrows, these are the gold tip knocks. I like them because they have an indexer on them. They got this little bitty tab, which you can see on there. We slide that up so it's not coming down. That little bitty tab right there so I can feel that with my thumb. So when I take my arrow and I pull an arrow out of my quiver, even my tab on, but so I got my tab here like this, I pull an arrow out of the quiver, I throw it on the shelf, sits the shelf. Once it hits the shelf, I'm done. I do not do this, okay? This is near impossible. So for me, I pull it out, I stick it on the rest, and I slide my, thumb, my hand back. I feel that indexer. I can feel that indexer knock right there, and it's just right on the string. I use one knock point, one point on there. That way, I don't have to fit between them. Again, I do not have to take my arrow and do this and do this. I don't have to, especially even you can hear that. You listen, okay? You can hear that. I like a, a knock that stays on there pretty well. Okay, it's not permanent. It'll tap it and it'll you know come off. Sort of, like that. Um, but I do like when you, I put it on this way, I can make that nice and quiet. No noise. So if I shot, boom, missed a deer and he's standing right there. And I'm like, oh, and I grab another arrow, I put it on. I can just slide that right on quietly with my hand. Quiet, listen. No noise, okay? Um, but I don't have to look at it either because I'm only using one knock point. I use brass, I like brass. But by using two, if I'm using two, I have to look and try to line it up like that to get it in there. I'm not a fan of that. With one, I can take it, set it on the front, slide it back, roll it in, and I am set and ready. I don't have to ever look at what I'm doing down here. I'll do it up here for you. So it comes back, I set it on. That's why I use such a big side plate. I can put my arrow on there and it's quiet. Anywhere I hit, doesn't matter the angle. Put that on there, and then all I do is just grab this, feel for that indexer with my thumb right here, slide it on, and then just hit the string. I can hit the string anywhere I want. It doesn't matter where I hit the string. As long as I hit the string, whoop, slide it up. So I come in, I grab it, I put it on a string, and just slide it right up to that knock point. So it's very fast for me as far as the follow-up. Deer comes in, stop, and, boom, oh, and I miss, and he takes two steps and hops. I pull an arrow. Set it on here like this, boom, and I'm ready to go again. That's it. Just like that. I don't have to mess with nothing. So for me, it's a very simple, easy process in why I use one knocking point and how I set it up. So, all right, there you go. Hope this video wasn't too long or boring for you. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and uh, I'll be back with more soon. Talk to you later.